southeast of Phoenix in the Hohokam territory. Now that picture was taken in 1902 and as you can see just the doorway on the front is about two stories high. This is made as are uh, many of the structures that I'm going to show you out of what is called caliche. Caliche is a very hard clay that uh, you can bake into bricks very easily. Actually you can sun bake it into bricks. And um, so this this has endured for all of this time. As you can see it is somewhat in ruins but that shows that these people really knew how to build a few things. Now I'm going to show you some more that are rather spectacular. Sometimes they use stones to build. They also, Jeff, figured out a way to have air-conditioned houses out here in the desert. I'll tell you about how they did it and show you a picture of one when we come back right after this break. Welcome back to the Kevin Smith Show. We're talking with Jeff Woolline. Jeff, just before we went to break, uh, I said, you probably know about this, but nobody's ever just put it in those terms for you. In case you don't know, folks, out here in what we call the Valley of the Sun, there's a reason we call it the Valley of the Sun. In the summertime, it is like living in the suburbs of hell. It is hot. Now it doesn't get really cold normally in the winter time. It gets a little chilly, but not not too bad. Um, but in the summertime, temperatures can get up to. Well, I've seen it at 121. And uh, Jeff, I don't know. Were you living here when it hit 121? Oh, oh yeah, uh huh. That was tough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think it was like 115 in the shade. Yeah. Yeah, well, and and that's not abnormal for summertime here. That's that's a normal summertime here. So, these people were sharp. They were really smart. They built their houses in a construction that today we're calling them pit houses. Now, the reason we call them pit houses is because if you walk through the door of that house, you don't walk in to the floor. The floor is not level with that door. You walk, you step down about three feet. So that house is about three feet into the ground. The floor is. In the very top of that house, and this is a reconstructed pit house. It's made of adobe. In the very top, in the center of that, there's a hole. Now, the larger pit houses sometimes had two holes in the top. One was like an escape hatch. You could come in and out, and they had uh, steps. Uh, the other one is for the smoke from the fire that they use for cooking and in the winter for heat. Inside of this pit house, if you open that door and allow the air to flow through that door and up that out that uh, exhaust vent, if you will, in the top of it. The internal temperature of that house will stay below, generally speaking, below 95 degrees. Now that may, you may think, oh well, that's, that's still hot. Well, Jeff, I think you can attest to this. If you're out here and it's 121 degrees and you can get into some place that's 95, it feels mighty cool. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. And and so they had devised this way of uh building houses and they built them in communities. The community there would be uh all all of the houses in the community would be constructed like this. 
around a central courtyard. And then they would have a large communal oven for cooking meat and bread. Um, very often, a communal well for fresh water or a cistern. And they had a ball court. They played ball. I don't know exactly what kind, but they had a ball court for sports. Now, these would be in the villages. But this is certainly not the only type of construction they had. However, you've seen this before, haven't you? This looks familiar to you, doesn't it, folks? Because you've seen it in Star Wars. This is uh, Luke Skywalker, Skywalker's village in Star Wars. It's actually in Tunisia. And what they did is built pit houses. Those are constructed in the same fashion as the... Um, Hohokam. By the way, you know, Jeff, we didn't... We, I told where Hohokam comes from. It comes from the Pima language. I did a little study on that and found out that the Pima language, the actually, actually the uh, Akimel O'odham language, is a dialect of Uto-Aztec. And that can play a role in what we're discussing here tonight. We'll talk about it. But tell us what Hohokam means. Well, uh, um, like you like you were saying, uh, the Pimas consider themselves, you know, ancestors to the Hohokam, and which it, it it is a Pima name for the people who are gone, or the people, and what I like to say, the people who went missing. <laughs> yeah. Because they simply uh, just vanished um, off the earth. Uh, if they simply moved somewhere, we could follow to where they went to, but it, it seems that uh, they just left all of their belongings and... Just and disappeared. Right. Yeah. Now, this next picture I'm going to show you, folks, really doesn't fit this. It's just something I thought was really interesting. interesting. This is off of the NASA uh, JPL website, and uh, it looks eerily familiar, doesn't it? It looks like a pit house made of stone instead of adobe. And uh, that that photograph you're looking at is straight off JPL NASA website. Has nothing to do with our discussion here this evening. But I, I do want folks to understand that these were very sophisticated people. Sometimes they built into pit houses and sometimes uh, they simply dug back into uh, the crest of a hill, as we see in this picture. Now, if we see a picture of this over, uh, you know, if it's a, a satellite photo, uh, everyone says, oh, that looks like ancient ruins. Now, if you see a picture that looks like this and it's from Mars, they say, oh, that's, that's you know, geological. That's just some geological formations. It just happens. It's an optical illusion. Uh, well, okay, I, and and I've got some beachfront property to sell you in Phoenix too. Okay, now here are two examples. You looked at these today, Jeff, of some really sophisticated Hohokam buildings. Now these buildings are built back into the opening of a cave in the side of a cliff. They're massive, absolutely massive. And I'm going to show two of these because. And there's a, there's a reason for that. Um, the reason, and I'll tell you the reason before I do it, the reason is that I want you to see both the caliche clay construction, that's what you're looking at now, and here's one that is made of stone bricks. Now, when we looked at these today, Jeff, I pointed out that I said, you know, the, the Hohokam ruled in this valley where Phoenix is now, all the way down uh, to the Tucson area and all the way up into northern Arizona at the edge of what is today the Navajo Reservation. It's a big area. About two-thirds of this state was under the Hohokam. This was from A.D. 1 to about 1475. 
when the first Spanish 